with its 15 declinations, its consonant rules and a vocabulary that has nothing to do with Indo-European languages, Finnish can appear as quite scary to internationals coming to Finland. Besides, it's more than 70% of the Finnish population that speaks fluently English. With this information in mind, you might be tempted to ask yourself, why would I bother learning Finnish if everyone speaks English and the language is so hard? That is the wrong mindset to start your language journey. In this episode, you will see why it is worth starting learning Finnish as soon as you can and how you might even enjoy this language journey. Welcome to What's Next Finland, a podcast series of six episodes that will tell you all about living, studying and working in Finland as an international. My name is Noemi and I will be your host during these six episodes with topics such as learning Finnish, making friends, starting a job or creating your own company. Psst, did you know that Finland had a second national language? Swedish is also a possibility when you have beef with Finnish language. This language is also recognized by local authorities if you want to access the Finnish citizenship. Let's give you a few ideas to start your language journey. When you start your studies in Finland, you might be able to include in your degree some Finnish language courses, which are offered by most of the universities in Finland. If you intend to continue learning Finnish after your graduation, one of the way might be to enroll in a Finnish language course offered by another organization. A language course might come at a cost, but it's for sure a great way to practice your language skills and even to make new friends. You can find online and even in-person courses via two main platforms that are ilmonet.fi and finnishcourses.fi. And if you want to start learning Finnish even before moving to Finland, you can check resources and tips for free on kieliboosti.fi. If you're a fan of Duolingo, it might be the right moment to start a streak. Apart from these methods, you can also practice your language skills by watching contents in Finnish, so for instance, movies, cartoons or series. And you can find a lot of these for free on the platform arena.ule.fi. Now that you're all set, let's dig into this topic with our guest of the day, Ameja and Mikael. I'm Ameja. Start. I have uh, studied in the Faculty of Law. I graduated in 2019. After that, I have been doing different things. Uh, I've been working in uh, data privacy because that was my major. And then I decided to shift to the public sector more because that was more my calling. And uh, that somehow brought me to this uh, job that I currently do, which I enjoy very much, which is developing the alumni relations at the university. I work completely in Finnish as well, and I guess we will be speaking more about that today. I'm Mikael Varjo. For the past decade, I have been teaching Finnish uh, language and culture in, in many different universities and also uh, in the Finnish language and culture summer courses. Uh, the target groups have varied quite a lot, and, and I've taught pretty much everything from the basics to the more advanced levels, uh, both at the University of Turku, but also uh, a few years at the, at the Obu Academy University. I uh, also did a year uh, in California when I was, uh, I was a fresh uh, Finnish teacher 10 years ago. The past few years I've been working in this uh, pretty interesting projects that I'm going to tell you more about today. Let's start with a true or false game. I have prepared four affirmations about Finnish language uh, that our experts will correct or confirm. If you want to play the game yourself at home, feel free to go and take a few notes. Maybe you will learn something new today. So our first affirmation is the Finnish language has 14 cases. Is that true or false? You can decide who answered. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're talking Mikael about the knows. productive ones, then yeah, if we count out the accusative not being a case of its own nowadays, then yeah, 14. I don't remember all of them or the, even the names of the cases. Yeah. So, 
I think, I think it's ordinary good. speakers don't know about the case as usual. I think it's intimidating for students in the beginning to just hear yeah. that, okay, yeah. there's so many cases yeah. that you have yeah. to learn. Yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's more just you have to learn the functional language. Yeah, exactly. So, second sentence, there is no word for please in Finnish. I guess true, because maybe there's no direct translation as far as I know from mm. English. But there's different ways to say please mm. in, in Finnish. So you can say, for instance, you can say, I think, ole hyvä. So it's a combination of different grammar forms that you use this polite language, which you use only in usually formal situations. And then you get this please in a way. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I agree. I yeah. agree. It's yeah. always very context dependent yeah. uh, if you just compare it to the English English one. Yeah. yeah. So the third sentence is they are three genders in Finnish. <laughs> False. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's in case someone online At has least never I mean, heard of Finnish. In right? case I missed something big in the language, but no, no. Yeah. False. There's actually yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think this is one thing that I really like about the Finnish language, or is really, I think, in a way unique, that there is no gender when you speak. And I had a really interesting thing that happened very recently with my work colleague, uh, is that I used to always talk about my cousin. I used to tell her about my cousin, and I also, al so I always used to say Han. So she never knew if she was male or female. And just the other day, I was speaking in English about my cousin with somebody else. And then she realized, okay, she's female, because then I said she. It's really interesting that in also the fin in the Finnish language, there is no genders. I don't know if this really reflects equality in the yeah, society, I but so. I think it it helps towards going towards that direction, that, that there is more gender neutrality in a lot of different things. And the last affirmation then is, Finnish is the hardest language in the world. I want the Finnish teacher to answer it. <laughs> yeah, well, this is something I would like to like bust this myth yeah. once and for all. Of course, <laughs> Finnish is a very different language if we compare to, well, the big language families in the world. And probably that's where the myth has its origin. But no, <laughs> no Finnish is not categorically uh, difficult or impossible language to learn. It's just very, very different belonging to the, uh, well, the Uralic languages, the Finno-Ugric languages, and then the Finnic languages. It doesn't have too many, uh, like, close relative languages. And, and that's why, of course, there aren't too many people in the world who would speak the Finnic languages and have the, have the same, same, for instance, uh, vocabulary. That is my <laughs> my yeah. take on this question. And I think you said it also really well that Finnish is not inherently difficult, but Finnish is a different language. And that you, of course, realize right away when you start yeah. to learn the language that it's not in any way close to any other, I, I guess most people know Latin languages or those that are derived from Latin family of languages. So it is not close to that family tree. Mm -hmm. uh, language tree. So I would say that uh, you hear a lot as a language learner, you will hear a lot that Finnish is a dif difficult language to learn. And I think when you say that, uh, people more just want to say that the language is different. But when you say the language is difficult, I think you a little bit do a bit of disservice to the language learners, because again, you're a little bit intimidating them when it's you should be motivating them. So I think I think it's good to uh, tell people that it's different and it's unique, which it is. Yeah. But it's not difficult. Yeah, yeah. And it's a combination of different features. And if we yeah. like talk about those features, those features alone are features that appear in many, 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 mm. many world languages yes. as well. So if we're talking about like very unique features in Finnish, there aren't too many such mm. features. One of the very unique features, you know what it is? It's the feature that we have a negative verb ah. that is conjugated in person. And that oh. is actually a very unique feature if you compare two I world see. languages. I see. So we are going to move to the second part of this episode, which is basically 
why learning Finnish is important. And I would like to start with Mikael, who, as a Finnish teacher, is a bit biased. But still, uh, could you give us two reasons uh, to convince, convince uh, newcomers to Finland to study Finnish? Of course, it's uh, important uh, to put a little disclaimer that each and every one of us has different reasons for, for learning Finnish. And they vary quite a bit, of course. But uh, from my perspective, I've, I've taught Finnish in, in many different uh, environments. I, I taught Finnish in California, where every student had their own like uh, backgrounds and reasons for studying Finnish. For some, it was just to set them apart, uh, learn this quite a unique language, and, and, and for others, it was uh, part of their like family inheritance that they had at some point lost the connection to and wanted to like mm. rejoin California. To. Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. lots of <laughs> Finnish background families there as well. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There, there have been yeah. been towns mm. in the okay. northern California, for yeah, instance. Yeah. So there, they have a uh, traditionally have had a quite a big Finnish minority there, but. Now, if we are talking about in this, uh, in the context of Finland, of course, I, I, I would like to say that uh, social inclusion and the, the agency, like the, the fact that one is able to do as many things as possible here. That's a very uh, wide, w wide category and, and an abstract concept as well. But I would tie it uh, to the well-being of, of each individual. From my perspective, learning Finnish is something that widens the perspective of possibilities, and therefore, it is it is completely possible to live in Finland without knowing Finnish or Swedish, and still get along quite well in in, in different kind of communities, but still knowing Finnish or, or Swedish, but t today, of course, the perspective is in, in Finnish. Uh, it widens the perspective and, and adds to the possibilities. If you're in the student life, of course, uh, expanding your, your horizon and the communities to the uh, Finnish-speaking students, um, making friends there. If you're already in the working life, then uh, it can be something that is required uh, even officially but also like unofficially mm -hmm. it's easier to get along in different like <laughs> coffee table conversations mm -hmm. also outside the uh, university world in, in different communities if you want to go uh, do some I don't know traditional Finnish uh, lavatansit or something like that <laughs> then then of course uh, there it might be the like the the mm. gap between mm. generations and there <laughs> might be a lot of people who, who don't speak English or, or something yeah. like yeah. that it, it, yeah. it opens the the possibilities I want you to add that learning a new language never goes to waste I mean yeah. it, it increases your like pretty much the cognitive skills academic skills communicative skills gives you a perspective to different languages and also <laughs> The world outside the languages so it's it's like it, it it boosts your brain activity of course so it's always always good to learn a, a new language and, and challenge yourself in your case Amaya, you have decided to start to learn uh, finnish super early almost as mm -hmm. soon as you arrived maybe even before i don't know yeah. but could you give us the the main reasons that pushed you to start so early Although it's possible to, to survive here and to live a really good life just with English, I wanted to more connect to people on different levels. And I think that's why my answer to this question, also like to why, why you should learn the language, has multiple layers, I think. The most, I guess, logical reason here was that I wanted to have a good social life. I wanted mm. to, of course, have a job. But then under those layers are then more, more, I guess, complicated things like I wanted to connect to people on different levels and that only happens 
I can give you like a really simple outlook on this is that if you want to connect with, with for instance, a person that has lived here all their life, then a uh, lot of uh, topics that you will speak about, because you connect to people uh, based on common interests and common interests are going to be then something to do with Finnish culture or it's going to be something to do what happens here. And a lot of things in Finland happen in Finnish, obviously. <laughs> so, so it just expands your horizons. I wanted to have also, um, I wanted to feel this sense of belongingness. Mm. So that was really important for me inside. So that was my, my personal, I guess, motivation. And that's why when I got the chance to learn the language, I, I did it. I want to mention that you got the Finnish nationality recently. Yes. So congratulations Thank once again. You. The Thank model you. that, that all uh, <laughs> <laughs> foreigners are, yeah. are watching. And uh, I would like to, to ask you, so uh, how this journey, to, like you, you, you said that uh, you, it was important for you to belong to Finnish mm -hmm. society. And I think that there is no clearer way than to get the Finnish citizenship. Uh, mm -hmm. And for this, you need to pass a test to uh, speak a certain level of Finnish or of Swedish. And uh, you went before this to a full-time Finnish language school. Could you tell us like, what's the name of that school? But I think before I share more details, I need to also uh, tell the audience at what time I went to the school. like at because I think the prices and uh, everything then changes according to time. So, um, so the, the school that I went to was uh, Pasi Kivi Opisto, which is Pasi Kivi School, I guess, Opisto. Um, it's located in the archipelago in Turku, on an island called Kakskerta. And um, I went there for about two years after I completed my master's. So I started my studies there right after I graduated. So I studied there from 2019 to, I guess, tw uh, 2019 to 2021, yes. This was part of this Kotoutumiskoulutus, uh, which is this integration program. But this is really complicated, so I, I <laughs> recommend that you check the employment office's website. Yeah. Do yeah. you advise other people to check uh, on the website? Uh, in general, I think calling in Finland is really practical because people are yeah. super nice on the phone, even in English. It's good to always talk with them. I can tell you more about uh, about the course itself. So the course that I did was quite, I would say, um, how do you say this, extensive in its in its offering that we had different types of lessons for every day of the week. So it was quite intensive. So it was 25 hours per week. And the lessons usually were from eight in the morning to uh, three in the afternoon. So sometimes the times were different. Like sometimes it was from nine to one or it was from eight to two. So it just depended from day to day. And we had different themes for different days. So we had also uh, some days we just focused on grammar. Some days we just focused on speaking. Some days we had lessons about pronunciation. Some days we had lessons on culture. We also had lessons on um, uh, some some history even. Okay. So so different kinds of immersion into Finnish language is like a full time job, I would say. Yeah. Really? So it's also meant to be like that, that you spend all, and this was every day of the week. In your case, would you recommend it and to who? I would definitely recommend it, but it's a big time investment, time and energy and effort. <laughs> it's like a, it's a full day investment then. So you have to like be clear in your mind that, okay, you're going to spend now this academic year learning Finnish. And it's not possible for everybody to do that. So I was lucky enough that I was able to devote this time. So it depends on your own life situation, mm. that what is possible at that moment. And I was also working part time at that because I didn't get any this uh, help at that point. So working part time and learning Finnish, it's a, it's a big uh, decision that you have to then decide that you will put in this amount of time then for just learning the language. Yeah, and I think also in the beginning, maybe it's really also important to mention here is that when you start to learn the language, maybe it feels like 
you don't know at what point you will actually make progress. And maybe that's also why it's really hard to make that decision that, okay, do I actually want to invest this time in, in learning the language? Um, but if you put in enough time, it's possible. So I would definitely recommend this course just for that because I think immersion is what you need to learn the language properly. And through this course, immersion is what you get and they just bombard you with Finnish every day <laughs> and you can't use any other language there. Oh, okay. So that was actually good for me because that's what I wanted. So once you just do things in Finnish, you learn by doing. To learn the language efficiently, you need a safe space to make mistakes. Mm. And as an adult also, if you're, learn if you're learning the language as an adult, that is often challenging for people that mm. you don't find a safe space to make mistakes. And I think that is what you then get here is that, and you, you learn by making mistakes as well. So it's important to make these mistakes and give yourself time to make these mistakes and have those embarrassing situations where you're not able to say something and finish. But that is when you make real progress. I can share a little bit about how it feels to learn the new language. In the beginning, there is this pressure that you want to make progress and uh, getting outside your comfort zone, it takes energy. But at the same time, when you make progress, this feeling is what I remember. And it's really a good feeling that when you actually make progress and you're able to do things in this new language and when you realize maybe something, it could be just a word. I remember at some point that I was just walking home from a language class and and I used to take the bus. I got down at the bus station and and I was just walking and my habit was that I used to listen to this mm. which I don't do so much anymore. But and back then I used down. to because <laughs> it's it was a good way to listen to uh, people speak spoken Finnish passively. So that was really good for me. And I used to enjoy that as well. I mean, they used to have interesting topics there. So I was doing that and uh, at some point I just realized that I was able to understand everything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, it's it, it happened over time, but it was nice. And as you might have heard, spoken language is quite different than the written language. So that's an achievement or rather it's a good feeling in itself to be able to to uh, understand that language. And that means that you can communicate with people naturally. Once you speak the spoken language and that was a good feeling. I remember that. Okay, in the case of Mikael, you have a, a secret project that maybe you will be able to present uh, now. And in general, from what I understood, you work for so Simhe, which is an organization that supports immigrants, uh, and especially in their uh, transition to a career in Finland. Uh, at least that's one part that I uh, heard of. And so what kind of services do you offer to who? Uh, how is it accessible? Do you need to pay to access them, etc.? Firstly, the CIMHA services are quite a like, uh, wide set of services. Uh, we at the University of Turku are just one of the... Uh, well, there are universities and there are, there are these uh, other higher education schools that also have CIMHA services and, and the all the services vary a bit in different so organizations. It's a national... Yeah, it's a national service at the moment. Everything is free of charge. I I want to emphasize that. And basically, all all you need is just the uh, degree in higher education or the eligibility to apply to higher education in Finland. So, basically, at any any higher education degree degree goes. At the language clinic that I'm responsible for, we offer both group teaching and individual teaching as well. So the individual teaching especially has been our speciality. In addition to what I previously mentioned, we uh, at the language clinic, our teaching begins from the B1 level. So basically oh. we aim, aim to uh, fill the gap that there is after after reaching the B1 level. And also we recognize that the needs are of course very individual after reaching that level. 
So that is something we, especially with the individual teaching where we plan like an individual syllabus for, for all the participants, it's possible to like do all kinds of things that target to well, mm. finding a, a job or, or a place to study or something like that. So that is our, our target. SIMHESO is a national program. Is it, for instance, if you join SIMHE in Helsinki, do mm. you also need to have level B1? Uh, does it vary? Each, each university has their own like requirements, so okay. I can only speak For on behalf of, of the University of Turku. So remember to check your 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 own uh, universities. And for instance, many of the Simhe universities uh, or other higher education organizations also offer uh, something for or like as remote, uh, mm. remote services. And for instance, uh, at the language clinic, I've had now participants from all over Finland. So the individual okay. teaching especially is something that is very easy to do also via remote connection. So it doesn't, don't have to be from, from the Turku region. We can set the meetings also in distance nowadays. We will conclude that episode on that note. More, yeah, yes. on that note. Yes. Uh, so many thanks to both of you for joining us today. I will uh, see you in the next episode of What's Next Finland. Bye bye.